Hello everybody. The lighting is absolutely terrible in here today. It's like cloudy and overcast. So like I always say, I look better in the dark. So I look good today because it's not so bright in here. Can we all e at least agree on that? Because we can't seem to agree on anything else around here. <laughs> Hello everybody. Uh, we're going to uh, go on and on some more today about the uh, safety dorks because if I'm being quite honest with you guys, I wasn't done last time, but I had realized I was already recording for like 25 minutes and uh, I uh, 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 decided, I forgot what I was saying just now, I decided I should uh, just stop recording and then I'm like, you know what, I got more I can say on that. Um, we had a couple people reach out to me because I didn't uh, put out Wednesday's video and thank you guys, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I do, uh, even though I'm a grumpy old trucker, I do appreciate you guys watching my videos and uh and uh waiting for them to come out and all that and sometimes i just take the day off and that's what happens so you you have to when you're doing youtube you have to this shit will drive you insane so uh yeah i just took a day off thanks for reaching out but every once in a while i just skip a day and go you know what fuck it we'll worry about it later uh got a few people to thank for uh super thanks though i know i i skipped wednesday so uh they kind of piled up on me a little bit so i want to go through the list real quick if you don't mind uh we've got jared with two dollar super thanks thank Thank you jared florida jake in the house with five dollars thank you florida jake appreciate that uh steven steven coming through with ten dollars thank you steven appreciate you man thank you so much uh freddie with five dollars thank you freddie uh really rail with uh two dollars thank you thank you i appreciate that uh michael i had to go track down your name through the youtube app because youtube studio is a hater and on the youtube studio it will just show your at and uh, your at's kind of generic. I'm not trying to bust your balls. I'm actually trying to thank you. So, Michael, I had to go track your name down, and I did. I was successful uh, with $5 on the last video, and Orlando uh, with uh, $2 on a video where I was making fun of Prime, I think, which uh, doesn't sound like something I would do, but maybe, maybe something slip through the cracks i'm not really sure uh what do we got to talk about today uh more safety dork bullshit um a lot of the reason i took wednesday off was i need it sometimes for like mental health reasons as you guys know i'm kind of a fucking crazy person and i was getting ready to record i kind of had a late start in the day i went to pick up the the load i needed and i was like okay i can stop i can get it recorded i can get it uploaded it's all gonna happen very quickly and when i pulled in to get fuel i needed to fuel the truck i pulled in to get that and i i read a comment that just like made me roll my eyes and put my phone away for the rest of the day um and that that comment i'll tell you what it is people say josh don't read the comments that's where a lot of the content comes from what the fuck do you want me to tell you um and i would feel bad people take time to watch my videos and then i'm i just ignore them who the fuck do i think i am holy shit wow i really think i'm something don't i these are the people that watch my videos anyways fuck them i don't want to talk to them that sounds like a shitty way to handle this kind of business but whatever um anyways uh somebody said i'd, I'd really uh like uh your videos if you would stop saying all the gds in them well fuck me holy shit i gotta stop saying goddamn now because this one guy over here don't like that i say goddamn and to that i respond uh it's not a youtube content creator's responsibility to make sure you don't hear a fucking word you don't want to hear it's not up to anyone else to protect you from words okay uh, so, um, with all due respect, uh, fuck off. I don't know what you want me to tell you. You don't like the words? The, sorry, those are what's in the video, okay? Um, and that's just kind of the way the shit goes. I don't know what to tell you guys that tell me, Josh, I would really like you if, well, if what? If what? Like, I am literally this crazy person on the camera that you're listening to. You don't get to like me if I was someone else. You like me or you don't like me. Those are your choices, all right? Fuck, I can't hold your hand through all of this. Figure it the fuck out, okay? Thanks for watching, but please figure it the fuck out. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say anymore. Like, I'd like you if. Nah, fuck, man. And then I was uh, accused of, uh, oh, what was it? Um, uh, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of it. It's like on the edge or, uh, uh, too like hyper, but hyper is like a word you would use like for a child. It was like, I forget what it was, uh, that this person accused me of basically bringing too much energy to my videos. Well, that sounds like a terrible fucking idea, doesn't it? And, uh, 
I, I wish I could remember how he said it. He's like, basically, though, it was on my video where I was making fun of Love's employees for being assholes. You know, Love's employees, the ones that ignore you when you walk in the door. Or, you know, you got to wait to check out until they finish their conversation. They ain't got a goddamn shower clean. You know Love's employees, right? And uh, uh, he's like, you're, you're too high strung, is what he said. Josh, you're too high strung, okay? Every time I walk into Love's, they greet me and they say hello to me. I'm sure they do, your highness. I am absolutely positive that's what happens. You walk into Love's and all of a sudden, all the Love's employees start doing their fucking job because you walked in. Yes, I get it. I get it. Look, maybe so. Everybody has different experiences in life. But me being the asshole that I am, I told him, I said, I will not, I will not apologize for bringing energy to my videos, right? And uh, he said, hey man, I like your videos because you're the only person dumb enough to go work for Swift. What a dumb fucking statement. What a dumb fuck statement that is. Your job has nothing to do with your level of intelligence. God damn it, if I gotta walk you through this whole goddamn thing, I will. <laughs> Holy shit. Let me walk you through why I'm at Swift. Motherfucker. I thought I've already explained this. So now you guys see why I took Wednesday off, huh? Right? Now you get it? Yeah, because I get crazy sometimes and shit gets on my fucking nerves. I came to Swift as a 10-year veteran of trucking to see what Swift is like with veteran eyeballs on the company. It the whole thing's an experiment and I'll pull the plug on the motherfucker as soon as I want to because then he was real concerned about when I'm going to quit Swift. Look, I'm tired. I'm tired, my friends. I'm tired of people forming parasocial relationships with me where they're so goddamn concerned about where I work. Let me tell you where I'm going to work. Let me tell you, in case you're not sure, wherever the fuck I want. That's where I'm going to work. And I always said from the beginning, this is an experiment at Swift. I want to see it for myself. And uh, the minute I feel like it's time to pull the fucking plug on it, I will. And that's my go own goddamn thing to figure out. And I'm, I'll fucking do it. I ain't scared. I'm not scared. So there will be that video. It, it will exist at some point. Well, you thought I came here to retire? It could come next week. Who fucking knows? I don't really fucking know. But man, it sucks because I think I'm pretty good at communicating. I, not really because I talk too fast. I've noticed on my videos, I get a little excited and I start talking too fast. But I think overall, I'm pretty good at communicating. How did I end up with a hundred dipshits that can't figure out why the fuck I work at Swift? What the the fuck is going on here so that's why i took wednesday off hello everybody it's good to see you oh holy shit being a youtuber is exhausting <laughs> but you know guys I, I know a lot of people aren't gonna like how i started the video and they're gonna be like josh you're paying too much attention to this and all that um there's a thing that's been bothering me i'll try not to talk on this for too long um people are assholes and, and that bothers me. Um, there's a bunch of loudmouth cousin fuckers that think their opinion's the only goddamn one that matters. And if you don't listen to them, then you're just not as smart as them. Well, fuck it. I don't care. I'm not as smart as you. I don't fucking give a shit. But there's there's got to be a cultural shift at some point. Like, listen, you're a loudmouth on the fucking internet, and nobody gives a shit about your stupid opinion. And there actually is a cultural shift that's going on. Uh, comedians are, like, not listening to people's bullshit anymore. Musicians are kicking motherfuckers out of their shows for acting and like fucking idiots and uh me i have boundaries here on this channel all right you can't be nice then get the fuck out that's the, my boundaries all right yeah but josh you talk a whole lot of shit on on uh your videos correct correct now you make the decision do you like it or do you not like it and that's how you make YouTube work to your advantage. You, not me. You, you, you go, I don't like this son of a bitch. I'm not going to give him my view. I'm not going to give him my watch time and, and fuck him. And then, then you bury my channel uh, because everybody hates me. And that's the way the whole goddamn system works, right? But I got to be honest, I'm getting tired of the entitled brats that think every video should be catered to them. This is how I feel. Did you tune in to watch me or did you tune in to watch you? Just turn on your fucking camera and record the video you want. It's that easy. It's that easy. Okay. <sighs> what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Um, anyways, as I was saying, that's why I took Wednesday off. I guess I'm still emotional over it. <laughs> anyways, the safety dorks, my friends. We didn't finish talking about them. We didn't get through it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, because there were other points I wanted to make and I didn't get to make them. And I know sometimes I focus in on the negative comments. There's posit positive ones too. And there were a lot of people that were understanding what I was saying. You know why? Because they're not dipshits, that's why. And you know who I like? Not dipshits, that's who I like. I like not dipshits. Um, 
I understand that trucking companies, even including Swift, have these safety policies in place where they will call you and they'll tell you a bunch of stupid shit about how you were being an unsafe driver when you know full well you had that truck under control, right? It's part of being a trucker. It's the stupid shit we all deal with. And that's just how the fuck it goes. There were a lot of people that understood the things I was trying to say, you know, um, it's against Swift's policy that the truck hit 76. Got it. Understood. Understood. Um, is it really a dangerous act for the truck to be going 76? No, not in the fucking least. Absolutely fucking not. It's not. Um, and there were a lot of people that understood that, and they are experienced truckers, obviously, apparently, too. And uh, they, they got what I was saying. Uh, the, the following too close thing. Oh, you're following too close. Um, I didn't get a whole lot of shit about that because I think a lot of us probably get our balls busted a lot more by companies than we should about a following distance. Like there's a whole science behind following distance understood. I get it, right? We're all not scientists. Some of us might be. I can't get my fucking phone to stay straight. What is going on with this piece of shit? God damn it. I'm quitting YouTube. I'm done. I'm done. Um, <laughs> anyways, I can't get my damn phone to stay straight and it's bothering me. Um, but we all get caught up every once in a while get a phone call about following distance that's a whole fucking thing right what else were they uh pissed off but well yeah that when i almost sideswiped that amazon truck i don't know what swift was so fucking mad about they're mad at me because i almost sideswiped an amazon truck no they were right they were right and it was a mistake on my part and i deserved every bit of that phone call like i tried to explain um but we just were still caught in the on and on bullshit of of 76 miles per hour give me a fucking break are we serious right now and i had a a, a lot of people that obviously understand that there were a lot of sarcastic comments oh cut. settle down out there speed demon going 76 a lot of guys are like oh, i've got trucks going 85 before you know who gives a fuck about all this so i want to make sure i point all that out there were a lot of people that were rational and reasonable people and understand that 76 miles per hour does violate swift's policy we all know that now right now we're all on the same page is it really a crazy act like some people would lead you to believe on the internet and the answer to that is a resounding fuck no it's not a crazy act that we should be freaking out about so i want to get into some of the stupid shit uh that, that you know i've had to deal with oh, since uh making that video uh, good job truckers on uh selling your souls to uh the mega carriers i thought i was the one working for the mega carrier but i guess what they say goes right that we're, we're all gonna oh yeah they said it so that's the, the rules of the road now you know that sounds fucking crazy to me um but uh there were, were a lot of people talking about what if your steer tire blows out josh what are you gonna do if you have a steer tire blowout did you guys know maybe it's my experience as a trucker talking there is almost no excuse in the world no reason in the world why you should have a steer tire blowout unless you are being negligent and i fucking wholeheartedly mean that there might be a couple scenarios in the world where you blow a steer tire maybe you're in a high-speed chase with the police and they throw a spike strip out then you might blow a steer tire that's a fucking possibility but under normal operation of a truck, if you blow a steer tire, that shit's on you. You weren't paying attention. Um, you weren't doing your pre-trips. You absolutely were not doing your pre-trips if you blew a steer tire. I have been a truck driver, like I said, for 10 years. I have not blown a steer tire one fucking time, but you know what I have done? You know what I have done? shut this fucking truck down until the steer tire was replaced if that's what it took because you do not fuck around with a steer tire are you out of your fucking mind if you're ever in a position where you're like what if i blow a steer and i'm not saying it can't happen okay there are extreme situations where you might blow a steer tire but the vast majority of steer tire blowouts are because you're not fucking paying attention so if you're living your life afraid that a steer tire is going to blow out would it be too much to ask for you to pre-trip that motherfucker get your fat ass out of the truck every once in a while have a look around that motherfucker and see if anything needs to be replaced i have never in my life feared blowing out a steer tire i have not now i did used to own that international right and uh i noticed uh that my my steer tires were starting to wear kind of weird right and just starting 
just starting. They had a very strange wear pattern to them. I didn't drive that truck even more than three days. Like, and it was just, it was, the wear pattern was barely visible. So it's one of those things like, let's keep an eye on that, right? I didn't drive that truck for more than three days before I shut that motherfucker down, put it in the shop, got both steer tires replaced. The mechanic looked at it and he said, hey, I'm not so sure about these rims. These rims look to be in bad shape. I said, good, replace those rims. I said, now what can you tell me about this weird wear pattern on these steer tires? He said, I think your shocks are blown out. Like, he's a mechanic. I, I trust him, whatever. And sometimes you just have to trust him. Arguing with a mechanic sometimes doesn't do you a whole lot of fucking good. They know more than me. They do. So I just said, okay, so you think those shocks are worn out and that's what's causing those steer tires to wear like that replace those shocks for me while we're at it and we replace that whole motherfucker because you know why i don't want to live my life in fear of a fucking steer tire blown out um and for those that don't know, we have people that are not truckers that hang out on this channel. And if you don't know, I will educate you a little bit on why a steer tire blowout is a devastating thing, a very scary thing to have happen to you. Uh, the rest of your tires are duals, right? On your, your drive axle and your tandem axle on the trailer, those are all duals, right? So you got another tire right next to it. Um, that's one reason that uh, steer tires much scarier they're not duels right so when that tire blows your truck is going to drop on that side at fucking highway speeds and take your ass for a ride all right plus it steers the truck right the rest of the tires well i mean your your uh, drive axle isn't being drug necessarily it's doing the driving but it don't steer the motherfucker and when a trailer tire blows nah, nothing happens it throws the tread all over the place hopefully a fucker in a minivan isn't sitting right next to you like he shouldn't be doing anyways um but uh that's why it's a, a fucking devastating thing there are things on a truck that like you can take a mental note of okay let's get that fixed later let's get this load on down the road you know what's not on that list the fucking steer tire so if you're asking me what if josh what if a steer tire blows out then i've got bigger issues i've got deeper problems i can't get my lazy ass out of the truck to look at the motherfucker i don't i shouldn't be driving this truck are you shitting me what if a steer tire blows out at any sign of problems with those steer tires we're getting them replaced and if there's an underlying cause that, I mean, an underlying problem that's causing them to, to do whatever they're doing, we're getting that fixed too. You do not fuck around with a steer tire. And that was a, a comment that someone left. It was a really positive comment. They said, yeah, if you're that worried, if you're that scared of your tires, have you ever considered doing a pre-trip? Yeah, now I'm the safety dork. Pre-trip your fucking truck. Why, what are you scared of? If you, I mean, holy shit, this blows my fucking mind. Are you shitting me right now with this? But when your steer tire blows out, holy fuck. Holy fuck. You're shitting me. You're kidding. This is our argument for a truck going 76 miles per hour. What if a steer tire blows out? Fuck my life. Are you shitting me? Um, now, on that note, somebody might come back and say, Josh, didn't you just blow a trailer tire? Yeah, I did. And like a couple weeks before that, I blew another one, right? There's there's something different about that. And if you don't know, I'm about to tell you about all about that too. Does anyone know what trailer tires are? Most of the time, especially in bigger companies, they're reject tires. They're fucking uh, re retreads, recaps, whatever you want to call them, recycled fucking tires. The cheapest goddamn tires you can get. A lot of companies will run their, uh, their drive tires down to where they're not in very good shape and they put those on the trailer. Trailer tires are cheap as fuck. Now, you could probably get a good trailer tire, but these companies, for the most part, run cheap-ass trailer tires that are uh, going to blow. I was going to say a ticking time bomb, but that sounds a little extreme when we're talking about a, a trailer tire. Now, you don't want to be next to it when it blows out, um, but it's not devastating. It's not something that's going to get you killed, most likely. It's, it's going to be just fine. So if you want to compare like trailer tires to steer tires, there's always room for like, yeah, that tire's kind of a piece of shit back there, isn't it? Now, I'm not talking about a bald-ass tire with a bunch of divots in it and a bunch of bullshit like that. These retread or recap tires, whatever you want to call them, they'll blow apart any any minute. They're all ready to go any fucking minute you want. So there is a huge, huge difference in those fucking things. Goddamn, why do I have to educate out of anger? Why can't I happily educate people? This is why I was never a teacher. I'd be kicking those kids in the ass. Get the fuck out of here, stupid, you fucking dummy. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't educate kids. 
said, like other people's kids, get them the fuck away from me. I could never be a goddamn teacher. Um, anyways, I'm still baffled by I'm not allowed to say goddamn on my own goddamn videos. That's fucking shocking. You tuned in to watch a trucker talk and you're like, oh god, he, that guy doesn't sound like he's a fucking saint at all. You're right. I'm not. I'm not a nice person, alright? I'm, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell, and I'm okay with that. That's just fucking fine with me. Uh, what else are we talking about? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was another one that really bothered me, too. It was the guy that thought he should be hired to Swift Safety Department because he couldn't believe what a menace I was being on the road, right? Um, and uh, he said, uh, Josh, what if? Because you remember when I hit that 76 miles per hour, it was because some asshole pulling a camper fucking blocked me in the left lane after I was clear to pass him. I was good. And then he decided to match my speed. You know, those assholes. Yeah. So I was just trying to get around the motherfucker. Right. Um, so the guy's like, Josh, what if, what if Josh, hear me out? What if you you're in the left lane and that guy pulling the camper is in the right lane and there's a car broken down in the shoulder. Then what? Really? What do you mean? Then what? We just keep driving. We just keep fucking driving because if there's not room for that guy to get over in the right lane that he needs to get over in the left lane to go around that car well then he's got to stay right the fuck where he is that's what if what are you talking about what if there's somebody broke down on the shoulder look we try not to kill people broke down on the shoulders right we're all making a conscious effort not to kill people broke down on the shoulders nothing changed nothing happened there i'm a million mile driver my friends all right, so you're telling me that in my whole career, there's never been a time where somebody's broke down on the shoulder, I'm blocked into the left, like what did I do? What did I do? You know what I did? I kept driving. I kept fucking driving. But me personally, I can't deal with these what if scenarios. Is that how people live their life? Really? What ifs? What ifs? Guys, if, if we, could, we could what if anything. We could what if everything to fucking death. And then what? Then what? All that time we spent saying what if, we could have been doing something. I don't live my life by what ifs. If I lived by what ifs, I might as well park this motherfucker. I might as well not push the record button on the camera. I can guarantee you there are people seething with rage right now at the first eight minutes of this video for me calling out bullshit, stupid internet comments. And fuck them. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't live by fucking what if. That's fucking silly. God damn. And this guy wants to be the, the safety director of Swift. Well, if your philosophy is what if, then get that job at Swift and then order all trucks shut down because we don't know what could go wrong. See how long you got that job. I'm doing it based on what ifs. Good fucking luck. Good luck. You're not going to hold on to that job very long. God damn it. None of us would get out of fucking bed if we said what if to every goddamn thing. I don't what if my way through life. That sounds fucking silly to me. And it sounds cowardly, if I'm being fucking honest with you. We spend all of our time going, what if? What if? What if what? Goddamn. What, what, what are the what ifs? I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, fuck, I, I could go back and look through my life and fucking, like, think of all the things that, like, would have been different if I would have stopped to say what if. You know, that doesn't even make sense. I'm married for almost two decades because I asked out a girl that I thought was out of my league and apparently I guess she thought she wasn't and I've got, you know, beautiful kids out of it and I could have just said, what if she rejects me? And then what? Then fucking what? That sounds silly. I got, I've, I'm, I've grown a couple YouTube channels. What if I said, what, what if I said, what if? <laughs> God damn it, I guess I do what if sometimes. What if I fucking just didn't do it though? Because I was like, oh, worried. People are going to be real mad at me if I tell them what I feel about things, how I think about things. Then I wouldn't do that. I was scared to death to get a CDL. I was. I was just a little tech nerd working in cubicles my whole fucking life. Well, I mean, my whole, like, more adult life, you know. And I was scared to death to get a fucking CDL. I didn't let what if stop me. Are you shitting me? What if is not an argument to fucking living your life? Goddamn. I'm just here to talk about trucking, and now I'm teaching you guys about life. That's not how it works. What if? What if? What if? What if? I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. So anyways, the point with all that is, was there a point? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Was there a fucking point? Um, I think the main point is, Jesus Christ, am I sick to death of stupidity. 
I fucking am. I'm tired of it. Like fucking, holy shit, what are we doing in our lives? We have to, as the workers out here, my friends, the, the boots on the ground, like I said on the last video, the blue collar motherfuckers that get out here and make it happen. We have to apply some sense of fucking, oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? Common sense. How can I fucking forget words while I'm talking about common sense? How stupid is that? We have to, like, god damn it. Stop bootlicking these corporations and saying they told me that's the way it works, so that's the fucking way it works. I'm not suggesting you go out there and go rogue, go complete fucking outlaw, but at least let your nuts drop. Fucking get out there and do your fucking thing. And if your truck happens to hit 76, laugh it off and say, yeah, yeah, I was out there cowboy truck and I hit 76 miles per hour, and now my company, my safety department's being fucking goofy about it. And fucking move on with your life. Jesus Christ, never in my life, what have you guys done to me? What have you guys done to me? I used to be this young trucker that supported everybody and said, you know, fucking people just need to learn and they need to do these things. And now I'm getting fucking goddamn fucking ankle biters that have been driving a truck for three fucking months telling me what's what in a truck. God damn, I understand why all the old fucks are so grumpy. Jesus fucking Christ, watch and learn, motherfucker, instead of telling me what the fuck is what. What if a steer tire blows out? Jesus Christ, then I need to hang up the keys because I was too lazy to fucking pre-trip my truck. That is what the fuck if. Bye now.